ब्रह्मांड पुराना पार्ट फोर पब्लिशर्स नोट द प्योरेस्ट जेम्स लाई हिडन इन द बॉटम ऑफ द ओशन और इन द डेप्थ ऑफ रॉक्स वन हैज टू डाइव इन टू द ओशन और डेल्व इन टू द रॉक्स टू फाइंड देम आउट सिमिलरली ट्रूथ लाइज कॉन्सिल्ड इन द लैंग्वेज विच विथ द passage of time has become obsolete man has to learn that language before he discovers that truth but he has neither the means nor the leisure to embark on that course we have therefore planned to help him acquire knowledge by an easier course we have started the series of ancient indian tradition and mythology in english translation Our goal is to universalize knowledge through the most popular international medium of expression. The publication of the Puranas in English translation is a step towards that goal. Preface. The present volume contains the Brahmanda Purana, Part Four, comprising chapters one to four of the fourth section. Upasamhara and five to thirty of the Lalita episode. In English translation, this is the twenty-fifth volume in the series, which we have planned on ancient Indian tradition and mythology. The project of the series was envisaged and financed in nineteen seventy by Lala Sundar Lal Jain of Mesar. Motilal Banarasi Das. Hitherto, twenty-four volumes of the series, comprising English translation of Shiva, Linga, Bhagavata, Garuda, Narada, Kurma, and Brahmanda Puranas, have been published and released for sale. The present volume, Chapter One, opens with the description of cosmic deluge, Upasamhara, which. starts after the completion of a kalpa lasts as long as the night of brahma and dissolves whatever had been evolved during the day of brahma here as usual suta is the chief speaker who on enquiry from the sages describes in detail the process of abhuta samplava the annihilation of the universe as in the other puranas here too the process of evolution as well as of involution is treated in the way of sankhya the evolution starts with the disequilibrium of gunas sattva rajas and tamas whereas the involution is brought about by their equilibrium the opening chapter explains the three types of dissolution viz naimittika occasional pertaining to brahma prak prakritika pertaining to prakriti and atyantika the ultimate due to the dawning of perfect knowledge Chapter two describes Bhuvana Kosha, or the different regions of the universe, and the abode of their residents during the period of annihilation. In the total annihilation, only the residents of Shiva Loka escape, for they enter into Lord Shiva himself. who being the subtlest anu is indestructible the purana declares that the dissolution is wrought by the supreme being through the medium of prakriti chapter 3 describes the process of involution of tattvas at the expiry of a kalpa chapter 4 explains the process of recreation of the universe after the period of 
dissolution. It describes how the world evolves through the disequilibrium of gunas and how it is destroyed when the gunas attain equanimity. The Upasamhara concludes the Brahmanda Purana. The concluding verses of Upasamhara are compared in the form of epilogues of the other Puranas, a fact which proves conclusively that the Brahmanda ended with the end of Upasamhara. Moreover, the four Padas, Prakriya, Anusanga, Upodghata and Upasamhara cover the five main topics of a Purana, viz. Sarga, Pratisarga, Vamsa, Manvantara and Vamsa, Vamsanu Charita and there is no scope for addition. But as it stands, the Upasamhara is followed by the episode of Lalita or Lalitopakhyana which proves intrinsically that the episode was appended to the Purana by the devotee of Shakti to give it the Shakta coloring that the Lalita story begin with a fresh benediction Mangalachara and that it starts with the different set of in interlocutors sage Agastya and Hayagriva shows that it was quite an independent work which was added to the Brahmanda text. It may also be noted that the Lalita episode ends abruptly without the characteristic mark of an epilogue. The episode is a comprehensive treatise. It consists of 40 chapters of which 30 are included in the present volume. The remaining 10 are included in volume 26 that is the text. The episode is put in the Uttarabhaga together with Upasamhara. It is strange that the episode takes the serial number of chapters from Upasamhara. The Upasamhara consists of four chapters. The episode which follows starts with chapter 5 that is in continuation of the chapter number of the Upasamhara evidently to show that it was a part of Brahmanda Purana. Moreover, the arranger of the Purana had to observe the partwise uniformity in the serial order of chapter numbers. To illustrate part 1, Purva Bhaga consists of chapter 1 to 38. Part 2, Madhya Bhaga chapters 1 to 74 and part 3, Uttara Bhaga chapters 1 to 44. Thus, in regard to the numbering of chapters, the Purana maintains a partwise consistency throughout. The scene of the episode is laid in Kanchi. Modified uh, Kanji Varam, uh, southwest of Madras, the abode of Shiva and Vishnu. The town is divided into two parts, the eastern and the western, called the Vishnu Kanchi and the Shiva Kanchi. The presiding deity of Shiva Kanchi is Lord Shiva, known as Ekamra. Ekamranatha. His consort is Kamakshi. The episode seems to have Dravidian background as Kanchi is mentioned several times. Lalita is the Shakti of Lord, Lord Shiva, represented by 
the symbol E. Without her, Shiva is Shava, a corpse. The episode opens with the worship of Shakti and the eulogy of her glory. Chapter 5. Chapter 6 narrates the episode of Indra and Durvasas. How Durvasas cursed Indra for his arrogance when the latter dishonored the garland of flowers which the goddess had offered to Narada and which Narada passed on to Indra as a mark of endearment. Chapter 7 relates to the scenes accruing from the theft and drinking and illustrates how the merit of good actions from the theft of property is distributed among the parties concerned. It also records different types of scenes current in ancient India. Permission to non-Brahmins, both men and women, to drink but prohibition to Brahmanas even for worshipping mothers. Chapter 8 relates to Agamya Gamana carnally approaching a forbidden woman and cites the esoteric 15 lettered mantra of Parashakti for releasing sinners from all sorts of sins both major and minor Mahapatakas and Upapatakas Chapter 9 narrates how Indra killed his preceptor Trishiras or Vishwajit on the suspicion of his complicity with Daityas. Mention is also made of the joint venture of Suras and Asuras for churning the milky ocean. Chapter 10 gives the list of jewels that were churned out of it. Lord Vishnu is said to have assumed the form of Mohini while Shiva, impassioned by her charm, dropped semen, giving birth to Mahasashta. The chapter introduces the Supreme Goddess Lalita, traces her origin and mentions the purpose of her birth, viz. the killing of Asura Bhanda. Chapters 11 to 12 recount the birth of Bhanda and the building of Shonitapura for his residence. On the instructions of Narada, Indra propitiates Parashakti, while on the advice of Shukra, Bhanda creates disturbance in Indra's penance. Chapter 13 is an eulogy of Lalita by Devas. Sri Devi promises to kill Bhanda herself. Chapters 14 to 15 describe the marriage of Lalita and Kameshwara and their coronation. Chapters 16 to 18 describe Lalita's march of army against Bhanda. Chapter 19 names deities slashed on the chariot Chakra Raja mentions the procedure of appeals to Lalita through Mantrini. Chapters 20-24 describe deities stationed on the chariot Kiri Chakra record the boasting of Bhanda, slaughter of Durmada, Kuranda and other Asura generals. Chapters 25 to 28 record how Nitya Shaktis repulsed the surprise attack of Asuras 
on the rear. It recounts the slaying of Bhandasura's sons, the exploits of Gananatha, the son of the goddess, the slaying of Bhanda's brothers, Vishukra and Vishanga, the effects of missiles used by the Asuras and those of the counter missiles used by Shaktis. It mentions Shaktis drinking of wine and its after effects. Chapter 29 describes the discharge of various missiles and their wonderful results, the slaughter of Bhanda, the burning of Shunyaka and the total annihilation of the Asura army. Chapter 30 deals with the resurrection of the Cupid, his subjugation of Shiva, Shiva's marriage with Parvati, the birth of Mahasena Kartikeya, who later, uh, who later on became the general of the army of Devas and killed the mighty Asura Taraka. The chapter ends with the return of Mahasena Kartikeya to Sri Pura to serve Lalita Goddess.